Hey all, welcome to day one of Advent of Elixir. So it's been a while since I've made some videos and I've decided to get back into the swing of things by doing a series of 24 videos, each of which highlights something really cool about Elixir. Every day until Christmas, you'll get a bauble or a little gift or regalito that will hopefully bring about a better understanding of Elixir or maybe something that will improve your productivity or something that's cool for no other reason than being cool or maybe even a little bit dangerous. We'll find out. But for day one, I'm going to show you DBG, which is a feature that hit in Elixir 1.17. Now, I know there have been a lot of videos about it, and it was a pretty big deal in the release notes, so it's very likely that you've already heard about it. But I will hopefully also be giving you something that maybe you haven't set up yet um, that will hopefully be good for you. Uh, so before we get there, let's take a quick look. I've set up uh, an Elixir script file that contains a module. We're going to call it Advent. And it is a single function that's going to get run after the module gets defined. Um, and uh, the way this works is it's going to take this atom. It's going to convert that atom to a string, then split the string at every character, then count how many characters there are, then convert that number to a string, and then it's going to send it to the screen. So we kind of expect the result to be 9. Let's go ahead and run it. And oops, it's not exactly what we expected. So how would we debug this and find out where things went wrong? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the dbg statement right here. And dbg is a pipeable function that takes its first parameter and we'll, and because it's a macro, it can see all of the contents above, and we're going to see what, what that results in. And then it outputs as its result, the result of the entire pipeline. So let's go ahead and run this now. And what we can see here is that the first, it shows us the entire pipeline as it was, and then it shows us that the first item was some atom. Okay, that's exactly what we expected. It got converted to a string exactly as we expected. But then when we split it on every character, uh, we got these extra empty strings on either side. So that's where things went wrong. Um, and then we count it. We got 11, which is exactly what we expected. And then we convert that to a string, which is exactly what we expected. So in order to, and then when we're done understanding what went wrong, we go ahead and just delete this. And then now it's back to where we were. So that's dbg. As you can see, it's extremely useful because it will give us a strong idea of how our data is flowing through these pipelines. And it can help us to understand exactly what our code was doing, especially when it's not doing what we expected. Now, when I use dbg, I have mapped it to that, which lets me type it just doing dd and tab. That's a very fast keystroke combination and it puts dbg in. So we run this again, and we can see that it does what we expect to do now. And let me show you how I do that. So what we can do is we can look at the user snippets. That's under Preferences and Configure User Snippets. And here I have this dbg code snippets. You can create a new snippet by, by clicking on this, uh, this row here, but this is basically how you custom define a user snippet in VS Code. You can see that the prefix is what you type it in, and the body is, uh, is what, um, is what uh, code gets injected when you type in dd with a tab. So I highly recommend that you place something like this in your VS Code if you haven't already. Um, I will put this in as a GitHub gist and put a link to it. Uh, below. And, you know, if you want to follow every day's little um, goodie that I sent to you via video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And um, I'll see you tomorrow with a new surprising bobble.